Now, more stories, insights, and analysis of Illinois policy and politics. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute. Once again, your host, AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Prof back with Cole Lauterbach. He is a reporter for the Illinois News Network. Thanks. Hey. Yeah, great to have you on this edition of Illinois Rising. And uh, this is a bit of a twist, Cole. Uh, you got a Democrat, uh, Illinois Attorney General Lisa Madigan, daddy's little girl, uh, <laughs> on the precipice of possibly shutting down government. Yes. Taking that, a page out of Ted Cruz. When, when did <laughs> Lisa Madigan become a right-wing iconoclast? Uh, looking to potentially... Stop paying state workers because, uh, arguably, the General Assembly has not appropriated the money to pay state workers. Wouldn't that be interesting? Lisa Madigan precipitating a shutdown of state government. Yeah, uh, I I think that uh, there is partisan politics in this, though, as with everything, obviously. Doing uh, her daddy's uh, dirty work, perhaps? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that that really is what it comes down to, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, you're never going to get anybody to tell you that. But it right now, looking at the tea leaves, it just looks like that this makes sense for their side. It pushes the pressure point to Governor Rauner to possibly enact a massive tax hike. Well, what are the legal implications of this? In other words, constitutionally, does Lisa Madigan have the authority to do what it's been telegraphed she may do or to advance uh, uh, an action consistent with uh, her argument. And for an answer to that question, we're now joined by Jacob Hubert, who is a lawyer with the Liberty Justice Center. Jacob, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. So the Supreme Court uh, ruled back in March, state Supreme Court ruled back in March that the state workers were not entitled to back pay raises owed to them because those funds weren't appropriated by the General Assembly. But uh, under a court order from a St. Clair County judge down there in Metro East, um, they have been funded. Lisa Madigan now reviewing the Supreme Court's order. What are the implications if she decides to make the play that the state should cease pay, uh, paying state workers? Is there Does she have the legal authority to do so, given the Supreme Court's holding? Well, the Supreme Court said that if you're going to pay state workers, you need to have an appropriation by the General Assembly to do it. It's not enough that a collective bargaining agreement says they'll be paid. The General Assembly then has to actually come through with an appropriation authorizing the government to spend that money. And it seems like a pretty clear implication of that decision that they would hold that that applies not just to a pay raise in the past, but to paying workers in general when they're subject to a collective bargaining agreement. So it would seem that Lisa Madigan would have a pretty strong argument if she wants to uh, come back and say that the state can't pay workers now unless the General Assembly passes an appropriation authorizing that spending. Well, just uh, help me understand this. How is a St. Clair County judge overrule the state Supreme Court? Well, a St. Clair County judge can't overrule the state <laughs> yeah, Supreme Court. Well, okay. the, 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 but the St. Clair County Court it ruled on this earlier and, and said that there was a, a good enough argument on the side of uh, the comptroller who wanted to keep paying people uh, to justify continuing to pay them. It didn't make reach a final decision on this issue. It just said there's enough to order them to keep making the payments for now. Uh, and so uh, when the courts come back again to, to give this, uh, a, make a final determination on that question, there will now be this Illinois Supreme Court decision in place that seems to pr- clearly indicate that an appropriation is necessary to make these payments. So this is, so this is really interesting, right? Because you have what the St. Clair County Court said, you have what the Supreme Court said. It's not what the Supreme Court said is not being enforced. And now it's even though there is this uh, order from the state Supreme Court, you still have the rule of men here and women because Lisa Madigan can choose to act in furtherance of that order, it seems, or she can just play Pontius Pilate and sit quietly in her office like she's done for most of the last 13 years. Well, that's right. And, and of course, there's lots of times when the Attorney General's office has not acted to stop illegal action on the part of the government. And, of course, these decisions are many times based on politics, not on what the law requires. You mentioned politics, um, and you've been, uh, Jacob, you've been following uh, decisions by the Attorney General, Madigan. Have you seen anything thus far that might kind of 
tip her hand as to how and when and what she may do with this uh, hot potato she's carrying. I have it. In, in the cases that were uh, proceeding earlier on this question uh, don't seem to have gone anywhere lately. So it's not clear uh, in what case or how quickly she could actually pursue this. But presumably, if she wants to pursue it, she can, and courts would act relatively quickly on it. So we could see something happen if that's what she decides to do. And just to be clear, the Supreme Court's opinion on the matter is not just with respect to back pay. It's also with respect to prospective pay for showing up and working your eight-hour day. Well, the, the decision specifically applied to certain back pay that was an issue in that case. But the ruling implies that, uh, in general, you would need an appropriation to spend money on salaries. So the Supreme Court didn't rule squarely on the issue, but it gave us every reason to think that if it's presented with this issue about paying workers now, it would say the General Assembly needs to authorize that spending specifically. Well, this is going to be a fascinating matter to watch, and I'm sure you'll be watching it uh, for us with the legal ramifications. Jacob Hubert, attorney with the Liberty Justice Center. Jacob, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Sure.